Thank you all for joining us again. Um, we have a, a wonderful program in store. And in order to get everything started off correctly, I have the Reverend Dr. Derek L. Peterson, Sr., my good friend who is going to lead us off in prayer. God, we thank you on this evening for those who have gathered in this place, in this space, and in this time, God to thank you for the many wonderful blessings and your mercy and your grace, God, how you've kept us this far, God, how you continue to bless us and keep us, God, real grateful even on tonight. And so we pray, God, that you give us guidance, wisdom, support, God, as we go into these discussions, into these meetings, interacting God and conversing, discussing the work that our souls must have, the work that you've called us to carry forth, oh God, in this work, this ministry. We ask you, God, to strengthen the leaders, our president, our officers, oh God, the people of this chapter and those to come, this community, God, this nation, all across this commonwealth, strengthen us, God, as we continue to do this work, that others may be healed, delivered, and set free and drawn closer to you and to the work their souls must have. So we thank you again, God, for this space. Bless us this and this hour, and it is in your beautiful, wonderful, and matchless name we do pray. Amen. 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 Dr. Peterson, thank you very much. And we just pray that uh, what we need to do as voters and, and what we need to do to encourage people to get out and vote. Yes. He will give us the strength to do that. And we yes. appreciate you and we thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you thank much. you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you. Be blessed. Bless you, sir. So your word in Hebrews 4 and 16 says, Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy, find grace to help us in time of need. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. I woke up this morning and clothing my right mind. I could have been dead and gone, but God stepped in right on time. Then there's been moments I thought I wasn't going to make.
which cometh my help. All of my help come from the Lord, and I need you right now. Thank you for joining us again uh, for our SCLC monthly meeting. This month, we're going to bring in bring you some virtual information. And one of our main topics and one of our main goals right now, as you know, is voter education and voter empowerment. And so I, I really, I really wanted to find out what are people thinking, you know, we have such a diverse population of people. And I want to know, what are you thinking? What is it going to take to get people to turn out in an off year election? That's really what I want to know. What do we, what do we need to do to get folks to show up? Virginia has three house seats that are very important. And we need to get people to show up, period. The other question I, I have is, what can we do at this point to encourage voter registration and to encourage people who are disenfranchised to register to vote? And that's people who have just lost interest in the political system or never really had an interest in the political system. What, what can we do to get them to vote? And then finally, what can we do to increase voter turnout at the polls? What can we do to actually get people to show up and vote? We, um, you have to register before you can vote. And then a lot of people register and still don't vote. Uh, as you know, and, and as I've talked about before, it was 80.85 million people who were eligible to vote and did not vote in 2020. That's 80.85 million people who were eligible to vote and did not show up to vote in 2020. I don't understand that. I don't understand why so many people just sat at home when we have so much at risk. So I'm asking a few people and I'm asking you to think about that. But I want you to watch this video and to see what some of the people that I believe have something to share with you will say. And please watch and please think about what you would say, given the opportunity to talk to someone about why it's important to vote in an off year election. Conniving methods are still being used to prevent the Negroes from becoming registered voters. Party. 
dedicated effort, y'all, yeah. to suppress the vote. It started when Africans were enslaved and forced to come to this country. There has never been a period of time in this country that there was not voter suppression. We have to define the job description. We have to define the agenda. I'm here to urge every person under the sound of my voice to go to the polls on the 3rd of November and vote your conviction. I have a very special guest that's going to speak to us very briefly to explain to us some situations. I have Delegate Lamont Bagby from the 74th District in Virginia representing Henrico County. And Brother Bagby, first of all, how are you? I'm blessed. Good to see you, Bill. All right, good to Dollar see you. Dollar Bill McGee. Yeah, that's, that's okay. it. All that they don't they don't know that other side. Okay, <laughs> look. Tell us how important is it for people to vote in off year elections? Please tell us that. Well in Virginia it I really don't believe it's a such thing as off year election. I think that's something they put and plan in our minds. But in Virginia, we have an election every year and, it, and, and it's all connected. So whether it's local, federal or state, uh, it's all con connected. And so uh, if, if there's some legislation, let's go back to the Obama administration. Uh, when, uh, when President Obama was, was in office and he was sending forth legislation to make sure that we had additional health care here in the Commonwealth and across the nation. We weren't able to tap into that because the state legislation legislature uh, blocked that. Uh, and so you look at it time and time again. Also, when uh, President Obama was in, in, in office, uh, some localities like Henrico weren't able to tap into the shovel ready project money that he put forth because the localities blocked. And so it's important that we vote in every election because it's all different levels and here in the Commonwealth it's spread out uh, year to year. Uh, this year is very important as we think about uh, different uh, pieces of legislation that's before Congress uh, from uh, justice reform to voting rights to uh, uh, women's right to choose. Uh, all that is before Congress and those things are not only gonna be important in this election, but it's going to send a signal to Republicans and Democrats uh, on the state le level, the federal level, and the local level that we're coming out to vote. And that, it doesn't just uh, for the next election. It gets their mind to take us serious. Well, I appreciate that. And 
it's just, it, do you have any ideas about how we can increase voter turnout? I think the more, we, we just can't give up. We got to continue to give the message. It's frustrating. Even when we look at the polling uh, associated with our governor here in Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, uh, his polling is at 50 50. It should be way underwater right now. As much as he's done to take the word equity and inclusion out of, out of the work that we've done over the last couple of years here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, how he's working to turn us back aggressively, the people that he's hiring in these uh, executive roles, uh, we, we just need to make sure people are paying attention. We need to push the media uh, and push the envelope. Well, I want to thank you very much for that. and. Um, this is going to be included in our basically our virtual newsletter, but I'm going to invite you to come and speak to our Richmond chapter as to what we can do to help with voter disenfranchisement, voter suppression, voter registration, and voter education. We're going to come to you and ask for your help. Thank you, sir. God bless and be blessed. Thank you. All right, talk to you soon. Hello, and I'm here with a, a dear friend of mine, John Dow, who is the commentator and basically the person who runs uh, on screen. Um, Listen up a minute podcast, which I used to be the co host for and have appeared on many times. John is a very knowledgeable brother, and I want to ask him some questions right now. John, how important are off year elections? Uh, they're more important than what we think because too often we don't pay attention to them. And a lot of that, I think, is the fault of the powers that be. We never think about off year elections until after everything is done and new officers or elected officials are put in place. And then depending on your party affiliation or who you voted for or what you want, the shenanigans begin or things begin to happen that you like. Absolutely. But we don't think about it until after the fact. And it's just not enough emphasis put on off year elections. They're so, just as important as the on year elections, if you will. <laughs> absolutely. So what can we do to encourage young people and disenfranchised people to register to vote? One thing we have, to, well, on a local level, you know, nothing beats getting out canvassing or meeting with the people and talking with them. Unfortunately, I, I think we're still a society driven, uh, we're driven by a celebrity driven society, I should say. And for whatever reason, a lot of people will respond to the known face or known name. Mm -hmm. So if some popular person or influence or whatever that is, if they say we have to vote or come out, then a lot of people will come out and vote. However, that local person that's been fighting the good fight for years or just getting started, they're just as important, just as influential, and a lot of times maybe even more so because they have their ear to the ground and they're right there in the mix of things. Right. right. So we have to do a better job, not only at the local level, but at the national level as well, to get people out, to let them know why it's important to register to vote, number one. Then also after you register to vote, we want to get you educated on the issues and why we want your vote. If I'm running for office, I need to tell you why I want your vote. And well, I that rolls over into the next question is, what can we do to increase voter turnout in these off-year elections? You have to have resources, and by that, I mean, if it's the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the Green Party, Independent, what have you, the top needs to send resources to the local level, whatever those resources might be, to get out so we can get people out. When I say we, people at the local level can get out and engage people who aren't registered or who aren't engaged. And when you can get 500 new registered voters or people who weren't actively voting, get them re-engaged, then the people up top, if you will, will take notice. Absolutely. But we just got to let people know. Um, for instance, you can look at another state. 
that's having elections or off elections, and you can point to what's going on, some lines or districts being redrawn, districts that were once Democratic are now Republican, districts that were once independent are now Democratic. Uh, you might lose, you and I were once in different districts, the lines were drawn, so now we have to run against each other, which means that when we get sent to office, whether it's at the state capitol or in DC, we're going to be a one short as far as a vote or right. a voice in the house. And that can make the difference in getting something passed or not getting something passed. And I think so, so as it as it pertains to getting people to come out to vote, what is it grassroots wise that we can do? To, to encourage people to actually come out and vote or they, to, to increase voter turnout. Go out, meet them where they are and let them know that you should vote. It's our civic duty and why, a, a, maybe a brief history lesson and then get them up to speed on some current events on why we need you to vote. Uh, you didn't vote in the last election or you didn't vote during the last cycle or last week and this is what we have. We have members on the school board who want to ban books. Absolutely. We have some people who don't want you to do whatever, or we have some people who do want you to do whatever. And you have no say so in it. When you vote, you have a say so. And hey, we John, just need more people to vote. John, thank you very much, man. For Glad to do input. it. But um, listen up a minute is available on YouTube. Yes. You can see John Dial on there. And and he has interesting guests. So and I I've been a guest a couple of times. Oh yeah, been, oh yeah, a lot cool. of fun, real good. So I thank you very much, Don. Glad I to do it. Appreciate your input, and be blessed. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Take care. Thank you all for joining us again. And I have with me a very special person, Dr. Roberta Pope Matthews, and she and I have worked together on several different things. But I. Uh, the crown and glory is her We Remember 1619 project. <laughs> crown and glory. That is a fantastic video. And I've shown it here at our SCLC uh, meetings. And everybody was like, oh, man, you need to show that again. So we will be showing it again sometime in the future. But uh, Dr. Matthews, how are you? I am well, Mr. McGee. And how are you? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Look, don't get jiggy now. You can call me Bill because- <laughs> Well, when you said no, Dr. Matthews- I, I know, you. well, then I'll call you Bert. As everybody knows that you, as everybody fine. knows you as Bert, and you can call me Bill. All right, that is fine with All me. All right, so let me ask you a question. How important to you are off-year elections? The off-year elections are extremely important to me because those are the elections that determine what is going to go on in our communities. Mm -hmm. That's the groundwork. That's, I mean, that's level one. And again, those elections affect us in lots of cases more than the larger elections, the nationwide elections or the statewide. So extremely important, Bill, extremely absolutely, important. Absolutely, absolutely. So what can we do to encourage young people and disenfranchised people People who just decided they're going to give up on voting, what can we do to encourage them to register to vote and get back involved in the process? Well, you know, as an educator, I'm going to start with education is definitely the key. Lots of our individuals who are disenfranchised and our youth, they don't have an understanding of how local elections make such an impact. And that education can really come to them in some areas indirectly. If you can show them how um, our taxes are affected, if you could show them how mortgage rates can be affected just by what's going on in our locality, the employment rate, those things are all, are all determined by in a great part of how we vote what our politicians view as being as important and who our politicians view as being important. Yeah, so if we can educate and just show them the practical sense of it, I always think back to a poster 
that we had. And I'm sorry, I can't remember which high school because I've been blessed to work in a number of high schools. And it may have even been at Petersburg High School. But for my students who were just, uh, who just ran from math, I can remember a year where someone put up a poster and on that poster, it showed how algebra and the skills that you learn in algebra that you use every day. Right. And I still remember students coming to me saying, I didn't know we use algebra that way. Right. We really do use math skills every day. So that's the type of education that we have to provide. We have to show our young people, the disenfranchised, and even people who are highly educated, how what we do when we go to vote or when we don't vote, how it impacts us directly at the local level. Absolutely. We've been so in tune with the fight to get people to vote in the national, on the national level mm -hmm. or on the state level, but we've truly missed the mark that Mr. make people stay at home and think, oh, I don't need to vote this time because it's not for the presidency. And I'll get on my soapbox for just a moment and then stop talking so much. But as a person of color, mm. I can't tell you how upset I get when I have to, or when I choose to hold a conversation with someone that looks a lot like me or someone who's had a lot of struggles. I just get so furious about trying to convince them how to, why to vote, why, why it's important. Vote, right. And if nothing else, people of color, we probably right. all had ancestors who lost their lives or who were beaten, who were spit on. Right for our right. So if, when I want to maybe turn that alarm clock off because I go vote very early when the polls open, nothing can make me do that. Mm -hmm. But get up, go and vote. Sometimes I'm, I'm reading some of the issues on my way. I'll keep it real. Right, right. But for people of color, I just don't know how we could sit back and not vote. So, Bert, give me one or two concrete things we can do between now and November to increase voter turnout. Just one or two things. Mm -hmm. Somebody brought up canvassing. Somebody brought up making phone calls. Mm -hmm. What do you well, think maybe one or two things we can do to increase some voter turnout for this November? Well, you know, the canvassing and the phone calls, that's what we've been doing for a long time. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of areas that have community centers or schools nearby. And you know, I'm going to keep it real. Sometimes you have to put something out there that lure people into a venue. Right. And then you get the opportunity to talk about and again, show those practical ways that when you vote or not vote how it hurts us or how it helps us in our communities but we got to get these conversations going you know right now we're we're facing so many social ills right so to come together to talk about some of the things we can do just to make our communities better we have to tie in yeah. what voting how voting affects that and, and how, you know, how the people we put in office, how they make such big decisions for us right in our communities. Sure, sure. So to, to pull people together, um, you know, if, if it takes incentives, if it takes getting some people who others will listen to mm -hmm. just to buy in, to help and support, we got to come together and talk about these things. I know the pandemic has stopped a lot of gatherings. Well, you know, people are starting to gather again, but the they pandemic is real. Numbers are going up. That's right. There are some virtual platforms and ways that you can get people involved, but you got to touch their interest. Well, that's what we're doing now. Uh, and I truly appreciate you coming on and helping us do that. So what I take from what you said, being uh -huh. you and I both yeah. being educators is... <laughs> Each one, teach one. Each one, teach one. That's each right. one, teach one, and each one, reach one. That's right. See, and we, Bill, thank you. Ahead. And I'm sorry to cut across mm -hmm. you. Go ahead. Thank you for saying that. Because I spoke on 
what we can do in a larger platform or in a community center or in our schools. But you're right. Each one teach one. Just the conversations that we have from day to day. And we can't approach it as if we have all the answers. We don't want to turn people off about voting who right. are already turned off. Right. But again, going back to that word I've used over and over again, the practical part of how it makes a world of a difference. Yes. Dr. Burt, thank you very much. Thank I told you, you I wouldn't take up a lot of your time, but I truly you. appreciate your words and I appreciate your support for SCLC thank and I do you. thank you and I appreciate you being my friend and I us, and us being, being my that, brother and us being in that fabulous video together that's award winning and it's yeah. gonna it's it's still gonna turn some heads Bert it is. thank you it is. God thank bless you, you and God thank you me. for speaking with us this All evening right. thank you so much Bill Bobby I have a brother John Mitchell from the Richmond Planet Foundation and he is a descendant of uh, John Mitchell, who was a famous uh, Richmond civil rights activist and the first black to elected to the city council. And he is also the son of Tiger Tom Mitchell, very famous, very famous, famous, famous radio personality here in Richmond. Yes, yeah, not Yep, yeah, John, thank you for joining me. Look. How important are off-year elections? Tell me that, please. Well, I don't think people really realize how simple it is to explain it. Off-year elections are like bridges, and you can't get anywhere without the bridge. I mean, you can elect all the high officials and all the Obamas and Bidens and Clintons and anybody else if you're a Democrat, but if you don't fill in those spaces in between, you're not going to get where you need to go. And if you do get there, you're not going to get there as strong as if you had voted on the local level to make sure that each brick is leading up to the next election. Awesome. You know, awesome. people have to look at it like that. So what can we do to encourage young people and disenfranchise people who have not voted? What can we do to encourage them to vote in this off year election? Mm. Well, I think we have to, um, well, first we have to be honest. Um, okay. ne neither party has a monopoly on um, either perfection or imperfection. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I think, with especially with young people, they smell, you know what, from a mile away. They yes, have, they yeah. know what they smell. They can smell BS from right, from, right, 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 right. So they know what propaganda is because pretty right. much everything they're they're sent over the media's propaganda trying to sell them something so if you're going to be speaking to them they're going to think you're trying to sell them something Absolutely. and i think the only way to make it different is that there have to be more available discussions on the, the pros and the cons of each party i mean if, if you're in a especially if you're in a black neighborhood or in a, in a black culture all you hear is a negative of what the republicans are doing and there's quite a lot of it um and on the democratic side people try to sell you everything that's good um on the democratic party there's so many different people so many different sections that each one you feel like they all have to agree before you can move forward so people don't like to have those hard discussions i think young people can handle hard discussions they can handle listening to hard discussions uh, i think we need to show them how to do it i think we need to be honest with ourselves and put it out there and say look they tried to do this and they couldn't do it this way. And this is why. Right. You know, and one of the reasons why it's because politics is not logical all the time. You have That's to pick true. your back. So yeah, you, you know, you gotta be you gotta be honest with them, but first you gotta be honest with yourself and just put it out there and they'll be able to make their decisions. But if you try to make the decisions for them and tell them how to vote or when to vote, a lot of them aren't gonna hear it. Awesome. Yeah. So so the, the sec this this last question is probably in line with that one, but what it is is what what can we do to encourage or increase voter turnout, not just from disenfranchised or people who haven't registered, but what can we do to get registered voters who don't normally vote in off year elections to turn out? Well. The 
the real answer is make voting a holiday. <laughs> but uh-huh. yeah, you know, but but that's 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 an uphill battle, and it's an uphill battle because I don't think enough people vote to get the people who would do that in office. Um, but immediately, um, I think it goes back to aggressive truth telling um, to you know tell people look. That Tuesday, it might be hard for you to come out there, but if you don't get involved with it and if you don't get in there, it's nobody's fault but your own. I mean, it's not the lottery. You know, it's not like you play your ticket and you hope you win. And if you don't win, you will stop playing the lottery for a while. You need to be an example, even if you don't want to vote. You got to make a choice to be an example to yourself, to your to your friends and your parents, it's like, look, man, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I think this particular person might be the best person to vote for. And you just have to make, you have to realize what the sacrifice is. And if you make the sacrifice now, over time, if we all make the sacrifice, we can make it better. You know, take an old folk, take 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 somebody else to the poll with you. You know, make make it something worthwhile. If you feel like you don't want to go, somebody needs your help. You know, wow. that's the way yeah. I look. John, thank you. Um, thank you for all of your wisdom and thank you for everything you shared with us. No we just wanted to get an idea of uh, some different ideas floating around as to what we can do to increase voter turnout because the election is, is coming up on us soon. Yeah. And uh, while this year's election is extremely important, uh, next year's election is even more important. So. We, we need to increase voter turnout now, and I appreciate all of your advice. And um, we're, we're going to get together and talk some more about all the great things you're doing here in the Richmond area with Evergreen Cemetery and, and just everything that you're doing, the uh, uh, Richmond Planet Foundation and all of that. We, we got a lot to talk about. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Anytime, Bill. Anytime. Hello, and thank you for joining us again. And I have a very special person. I have Kayla Mock with me, who is a political representative for UFCW Local 400. And we are very much partnered with uh, labor unions and labor in general. The SCLC and labor go way back to its very founding. And uh, Kayla is here to give us some professional information on on why it's so important for us to vote on off-year elections. Kayla, first of all, thank you and hello, and I appreciate you coming on. Well, I appreciate the work you're doing, so thank you. Absolutely. And then, so kind of tell us, why is it so important to vote in off-year elections? So I'm going to say something kind of controversial, and I would say it's more important to vote in off-year elections than it is to vote in presidential, we'll say presidential federal elections, right? So if you're going to skip an election, skip that one, because really off-year elections, your local elections, things, they are the things that impact you the most closely. They are the ones that your city council, your school board, you know, um, your your supervisors that deal with all sorts of stuff. And so those are the things that are going to impact you the most closely, um, closer to home, I would say. Yes, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So what can we do then to encourage young people and people who are disenfranchised to register to vote for off the elections. What are some of the strategies we can use to, to get more people involved? That's a great question. I wish I had a silver bullet because then it would all, everyone would turn out to vote. But I think um, from an organizing standpoint, I think we have to meet people where they are with people who look like them. And so for young folks, we really need to find the young folk leaders. Um, I'm an old millennial. I am not the young folks anymore. And so we need to find people who look like them in spaces where they are, if it's TikTok, if it's Snapchat, whatever that looks like. And then we need to identify their issues, right? If I'm talking to someone about pension plans and they don't care about pension plans, right. they're not going to care about voting. Um, so really identifying the issues that are important to them, because when something is deeply and emotionally felt by an individual, that's when they're going to move. And I think it, the same thing goes for disenfranchised voters. Um, it's finding folks who look like them 
in the spaces where they naturally are to talk to them about the things that really matter. And, you know, politics often, you say politics and people jump to one side or the other, right? right. They don't really know why sometimes. But we have found through our union work, if you talk about the issues as opposed to the politics and the politicians, people are going to listen and you're going to be able to come to consensus, I think, a lot easier. Um, so that would be my suggestion. Okay. So one or two definite things we can do to increase voter turnout this year. Just maybe one or two things that uh, the people listening to this uh, can can do. Uh, a minute ago I, or earlier, we spoke to someone and, it, and the word was each one teach one. Or the yes. phrase was each one teach one. Yeah. What can we do to in, to to encourage people to show up this year? I think that's absolutely right, right? It's each one teach one, reach one, <laughs> right? And so, um, first of all, in Virginia, we've had redistricting. So know where you are, what issues are affecting your community, and who your new, maybe, elected representatives are, um, because they may have changed. And so knowing the issues, knowing who your reps are, and then identify someone in your life that you think you can teach, someone that you can have a talk about yes. issues yes. and what affects them, and then someone that you think you can move towards voting and why it's important. So each one, teach one, reach one. So get them to the polls. Um, I think that's a fantastic, that whoever was earlier um, is a brilliant person because that's a great strategy. So knowing your rights, knowing where you are and who your reps are, and then identifying folks around you. And when I say identifying folks around you, we all know that crazy political person. In my family, it's me, right? And right. so maybe not that person, maybe someone who doesn't talk about politics yeah. um, that you can talk to and reach and teach. All right, beautiful. Well, I truly thank you very much. One of the other things just before we go, um, one of the other things that came up is we have to let people know how they can vote. So, uh, for instance, anyone with a driver's license that's 18 years old before November, I mean, by November, they can actually register to vote online. Yes. And then for, for, for all the senior people like myself, you can get that absentee ballot in Virginia and you don't even have to go to the polls. I, I was, yes. A friend of mine was telling me uh, uh, earlier on a meeting that she gets up and goes to the polls early. I haven't been to the polls. <laughs> I haven't actually stood in line in three years. Smart. Because I, when, when we started, I, when they allowed it, or three elections at least, when they allowed it, I, I went ahead and got the absentee ballot permanently sent to me. Yep. And my wife and I, we sit here and fill it out. And then on the first day that we're eligible to turn it in, we drive down to the voter precinct. We go into the old folks, what I call old folks, <laughs> but really the handicapped parking space. And they come out to the car and get our ballots, give us a little I voted yeah. thing. Then for everybody to know, and I'm just trying to use this as a little education tool, that later on that evening, all you have to do is go on to the election website and it will say that you have cast your ballot already. Absolutely. Your ballot has already been scanned into yep. the system and that you have voted. So there, we've got to try to educate people on the fact that you don't have to stand in line anymore in Virginia, no. which is a wonderful thing. Thank you, Kayla, again yes. for joining us and thank you for being a part. We look forward to working closely more with UFCW Local 400 and we'll be calling on you for advice. I'm telling you that. Anything you need. Call. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much. And I have a very special guest with me right now. This is uh, James Minor. Everybody knows him as JJ. And uh, he is the Richmond area chapter president for the NAACP. And he's a good friend of mine. I've known this young man since he was uh, quite young. <laughs> <laughs> And, and everybody doesn't know he's quite a talented singer. They, they, most people don't know that. They don't know that about you, JJ, but I, I know you from back in the day. So, so look, how you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm doing fine. This is a little humid 
Yeah, I just want to first of all say, Bill, um, thank you so much, Mr. McGee. Should I say? You call me Bill. Call you, I'm going to always call you Bill or Mr. McGee, whatever you want me to call you. But you, you're like an uncle to me. I want to thank you first of all uh, for doing what you're doing, for being the president of the SCLC here in the Richmond area. It is awesome to see someone um, that I admire and look to because you have trained me. You are the wind beneath my wings. I am because you are, uh, whether it was through music, whether it was through you being a teacher, a principal, the leadership is there and you have the skills to take the SCLC to another level. So I wanna say thank you for having me. And it's always a pleasure to be amongst good friends. And thank you very much. And I must mm -hmm. tell everybody, when I informed you that I was uh, taking over as president, the first thing you said, what can I do to help? Can I join? That's right. That's what right. Do you, what do you do? What can NAACP do to help the SCLC? That is a beautiful thing, brother. That's so beautiful. Look, so how important are off-year elections, JJ? Just please tell us how important they are. Off-year elections are very important because of the simple fact is that you, you know, you get to elect your senators and it has less federal authority as well. You vote on um, citizens' um, initiatives, um, different referendums. So off year elections are very important. Um, it could be with city council, it could be with board of supervisors, it could be with the US Senate, it could be with Congress. It is very important to vote in off year elections and we must turn out the vote for those off year elections. Um, Bill, I believe it was back in, I want to say, I think it was 1962, where the SCLC and the NACP partnered, along with some other organizations, uh, partnered with um, a voter empowerment program, a get out the vote, um, a voter education program. And we must go back to those roots in reference to getting our folks out to vote. We must do that. Okay, so let me ask you this. So what can we do? And I agree with you. What can we do to inspire young people and disenfranchised people to register to vote? What, what can you and I do together to help motivate the people who are not registered or the people who just don't feel like registering is, is going to do them any good? What can we do, JJ? I think voter education is a key. I think, I think young people need to be educated on why it is important to vote knowing that back, I believe it was not in, well, 1776, where you, you were white only, you could, um, well, white men owned land. Where it started then, they were the only ones who were voting. And then it took, went up into the 1800s, and then 1964, during the Civil Rights Act, giving folks the right to, so it's, it's a whole history um, on voter education. Um, and, and, that, and that voting history is very important because it tells you um, why we are here. Um, I think it is very important. Some of the things we can do is go back to the roots like we did as far as partnering. I think we need to get young people engaged early in elementary school, get them practicing as far as voting. They can vote for a student of the year or vote for a president. You know, some do and some don't. We need to get them in the practice of voting and telling them why it is important to vote. You know, you know when it comes to laws, when it comes to initiatives, you know, these are some of the things, and then we must also find out what's important to young people. Okay, right. we must find out what's important to young people, and 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 get them engaged early. You know, as um, I was engaged at the age of eleven years old when I was out there campaigning for Doug Wilder. They had a lot of youth knocking on doors, and he was running for governor. And because of us and a lot of other folks who stepped up to the table, you know, he was able to become governor. Um, right. And 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 we but we started early. My mom started early at the age of fourteen. You know, she was doing some work for for then Councilman Henry Marsh, um, who was the first black mayor in the capital of a Confederacy. You right. know, so all, all of those things you you must we must instill those things in our young people early and get them excited about voting. What's important so, to them? So what mm -hmm. can we do then? What can we concretely do? And you've already touched on it to increase voter turnout this year as an off year election. And, and, and you already talked about it, canvassing door to door, getting mm -hmm. young people involved. Give, give, me, give me one or two things that we need to just say, we can do this between now and November. Get on the phone, make phone calls. Absolutely. Go, go, go to malls, every gas station you see, have someone on site passing them a flyer or um, you know urging them to vote. Right. Also asking what's important to them. You know, we forget what's important to you. Why, why are you not voting? Right. You know, we need to do some canvassing, not just canvassing once, twice, three times, canvassing at least four or five times, just reminding folks to vote. 
honk your horn, you know, stand on, on, on corners, just getting folks excited um, about voting. That, that's what we need to go back to the roots, creating block captains, you know, everywhere people are, barbershops, beauty salons, nest lines, we should be talking about voting. And I think if we go back to the roots, because we know how to do it, and yeah. we've been through it, and we know what, we know what to do, yeah. um, I think that we can go ahead and, 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 and make that thing happen and get some folks out to vote. And, and, and get those numbers. We need to increase those numbers. We really do. JJ, thank you. Um, I look forward to NAACP and Richmond and SCLC working together. Also talk to my man with the Urban League and we're gonna mm -hmm. get together. And when we start, you know, we're gonna scare some people. We're yeah. gonna scare some people because when we they are. start seeing people like our groups working together again, they're going to get right. a little nervous, JJ, because they're going right. to say, oh, my God. One of the things right. that they don't want is unity. Right. They don't want unity because when we start working together, our power is, is exponential. So, JJ, thank you, man. God bless you. I appreciate you coming in and talking to us this evening. God bless you, and thank you again for having me, Bill. Love you, Amen. man. We'll be in Bye. touch. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation that we brought to you uh, virtually. Um, in lieu of our July meeting. Uh, I truly appreciate what everyone is doing. As you know, SCLC is very important and it's very important for you and for all of those who are concerned about justice, about inequality, to participate in an organization. I, if, if you don't want to join SCLC, join the NAACP, join the Urban League, join the Crusade for Voters, become active in some type of organization that addresses the issues that are important to us at this time. We'll be coming back to you with a, a, a meeting online in August, and I thank you very much. Um, seniors, you can still join $10. Youth members, we're still hoping that all of you all will sign up your youth members because their membership is only $10. All right, it's nationalsclc.org slash join. That's nationalsclc.org slash join. Please join, make sure you indicate it's the Richmond chapter that you're joining. We thank you very much. We pray for you. We hope that all is well. Please wear your mask. COVID is not gone. Everybody be blessed and I'll see you at our August meeting. Thank you. God bless.